love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it to Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. It also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, man? What's happening, man? What's the latest? Chilling, man. You heard they, they, they clap back at us, pause, at me. Who? I ain't gonna say our name. Her. Yeah. What, did they say your name? <laughs> nah, she, uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> niggas ain't that stupid. <laughs> 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 what, what, what was the clap back about? How'd it go? Nah, they was just saying I'm a clown. What I'm saying is you gotta <laughs> give me more details. How did this go? <laughs> they didn't like my commentary to the situation. Who is they? Is more than one person? Or just no, it's one just person? one young lady. We gonna yeah. let us slot. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's too early in the morning. <laughs> Make it to I lunch. Need, I need more details on this. <laughs> right. So, Let's move so, on. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. No, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna give so, you a pass. They, this said, time. they said you're a clown, and what else? <laughs> I'm gonna leave. It oh, alone. All right. a, a, a female? Yeah. All right. Yeah, keep, it keep it up. Keep it up. Same thing as name. I, I can't wait, really. Just give me the green light. Your attitude with niggas. You yeah. sure? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> you positive. <laughs> you, you think about it? <laughs> Let me know before the show over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, show me the video during a commercial okay. and let me make my own decision about it. He want to make his own decision, yeah. see? Yeah, I, I didn't see the video. No, let me see the video and then at, during a commercial and then I, I'll make my own choice. You could be, let me do me after I see the, after I see the video. It's what's on the blogs? Go ahead, <laughs> What, Go that ahead. ass on the blog, sir? Yeah, it was a blog. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to make my own decision about it, honestly. Sounds <laughs> yeah. like a great idea to me. Yeah. Okay, so we're actually going to start off the show with a little bit of sad news. So during the Kansas City Super Bowl celebration parade, mm. at least 22 people were injured and one was killed when a gunman opened fire. Most of the victims were children between the ages of 6 to 15. So first, obviously, our prayers go out to everyone involved, yes. and we hope everyone is safe, and we are sorry to the families who did lose a loved one. But what do you guys have to say about the event that occurred? That's that's super sad. That's super super sad. Um, to even to even think that somebody would show up to a celebration and want to steal that moment for from a city that needed that celebration, and as well to turn a celebration into a grieving process is is really is extra sad. You know. And to the person that probably did it, they're probably mentally ill, you know, to, to think like that. You just, something is definitely wrong with them. Um, and to those families, we, 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 our prayers is with you here at It Is What It Is, and we pray that you guys um, find strength in this time. Um, Mace couldn't have said it any better. Sad situation. Definitely my prayers and our prayers go out to the family and all the victims and is, you know, I, I think about a lot of stuff when uh, I was younger that I probably wouldn't do now, definitely wouldn't do now, but like yeah. Grant's Tomb, when it's Harlem Week, yeah. when it's mass and mass of people. I've been in a bunch of uh, riots, so to speak, not causing them, just like, you know what happens, mm -hmm. and I'm not relating what I'm talking about to this situation, but Black people, when you hear gunshots, you running, you see people running, you running. And I'm not necessarily even saying black people, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because when she said a lot of the victims were children, yeah. how do you decipher whether I take my kid to this or not? You know, it's gonna be thousands, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people at this parade. You wanna celebrate for your city, but at the same time, if something happens, uh, it's hard for a four-year-old or five-year-old to run with grown-ups and not get trampled or, 
whatever the situation yeah. is. So just trying to weigh out the scenario in my brain saying, damn, what would I do? Because I know my child, if there was a sports fan, would want to go to this celebration if we lived in that city. And this is very, very sad. As far as the shooting is concerned, I don't have a lot of information on it. But anytime somebody gets killed, period, it's sad. But during the celebration, it's even worse. So definitely my prayers go out to the city, um, the family, and everybody injured, and the deceased family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So also kind of on the lines of just Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs. So earlier in the year, he had actually texted his wife I decided we are going to win a Super Bowl. So she posted the text on her Instagram page after the now that we know the Chiefs are the Super Bowl champions. How do you feel about him even sending that text and him calling it? Um, I think that's what you have to do. You have to really speak things that you want to happen before they happen. I think that's what gears your mind up to even begin to, to like conceive the whole situation. Um, is is like even people that are not great athletes, like you know, they call it trash talking. People in the hood, they do it all the time. They talk themselves into playing better. So he actually is a phenomenal athlete. To be able to do that on a on an elite level is is supreme. To even be able to do that, but that's where it starts. It starts with words, and then words create the thoughts, and then thoughts, you know, create the actions and the habits, and and from there. It, you end up being there. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. You gotta speak things into existence, yeah. um, 100%. But what I will say is a bunch of bitches who got that on their text messages, all their husbands think that they going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes just really went to the Super Bowl. It isn't like, it's not mad bitches or mad part me. <laughs> A lot of girlfriends and wives like, look, my husband told me we're going to the Super Bowl. Every one of y'all husbands told y'all y'all going to the Super Bowl when the season started. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, though, oh, we got Aaron Rodgers. We're going to the Super Bowl. First week, Super Bowl for dreams is over. Everybody <laughs> thinks they're going to the Super Bowl when the season starts. So, I mean, for Patrick Mahomes to do it, it's a little more realistic when he texts it to you as opposed to the other fucking – 1,500 or however many players are in the NFL, but I'm pretty sure that his wife is not the only wife to get those we're going to the Super Bowl text. Uh, so what I'll say about it is this. I guess when you're Patrick Mahomes, the shit is believable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Imagine how many girls are talking to their friends, to their girlfriends talking about, girl, here we go again. He said he's going to the Super Bowl for the ninth year. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to the playoffs yeah. once. <laughs> and wish she had shown this text if they didn't win it. That's of course not. not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. We the thing is that's what I'm trying to say. We should and, and I know they don't want to throw their niggas under the bus, but the bigger question is, let's show all the text messages of the niggas who didn't win the Super Bowl. Well, I, I, I would bet it's at least three hundred and fifty of those texts or wives testimony saying he did say we was going. But I believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing by him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll do it next year, baby. <laughs> I'm your Super Bowl. Yeah. All that. Yeah. I'm your trophy. Yeah. Don't worry about yeah. it. So. Okay. Well, switching gears to basketball, when LeBron James signed his two-year $99 million extension with the Lakers, it included a player option for the 2024 to 2025 season – meaning he could opt out of the deal and become an unrestricted free agent. Two teams that reached out were the Sixers and the Warriors. So my first question is, could you have seen LeBron on either team? Hmm. I'm going to let Cam go first on this one. See LeBron on any team, really, you know, but uh, I, don't like, I, I wouldn't like him on either one of the teams. Me, personally, yeah. I wouldn't like it. Uh as far as seeing him on the team, yeah. But to me, the reason so this is why LeBron James is a commodity commodity, because you gotta realize these teams wanna make trades for LeBron possibly. And his contract is up. So that means you only want LeBron James for possibly three months. You're willing to take that risk and say, fuck it, we'll trade XYZ and we'll get LeBron for three months because he got opt out his deal. So let's say the Warriors did trade for him 
and then he gets there in February. They make the playoffs or don't make the playoffs. He's out of there in the summer. He don't even have to stay. Same thing with the Sixers. You want him for a minute, and then when the contract comes around, if he doesn't want to stay, he doesn't want to stay. They really, they listen. I like LeBron James. I think he's dope. But am I willing to risk my roster or my draft picks for three months and don't know if he's coming back? No. But that's the that's the credit to him being that great. The niggas is already willing to risk three months of players, draft picks, etc. Um, but I heard about it. Chris Paul kind of nipped it into the bud, said it wasn't happening. Uh, I've been hearing also Draymond Green is trying to recruit to get LeBron James in Golden State. Uh, Daryl Morey talked to Rob Palenka. Daryl Morey was inquiring with the Sixers, for those that don't know, that's the GM for the Sixers, was inquiring um, about LeBron James. And Rob Palenka asked him, well, is Joe M- LMB available? And the conversation ended right there. He said, forget it. So all these are scenarios that are woulda, coulda, shoulda. If you want to sit there and imagine what woulda happened or coulda happened, that's up to you. But it's just all what you think might have been. Joel Embiid is hurt. Uh, Clay Thompson's coming off the – not coming off the best, starting the game, not finishing the game. Uh, they actually been winning since that's happened. They creep back into the 10th spot. So if the playoffs start today, they end up playing uh, – Steve Kerr may have figured something out with that. But as far as LeBron James going there, just because you got superstars on the team, it doesn't equal championship. And I don't think it's a lot of chemistry between him and Golden State or him and the Sixers to make them win a championship right this second. It doesn't put either one of those teams against uh, better than Boston to me. It doesn't make them better than Phoenix at the moment, the Clippers at the moment, the Denver Nuggets at the moment. I wouldn't say Minnesota or Oklahoma City because even though they've been leading in the West majority of the year, I want to see where that dictates them in the playoffs coming up. They had a great regular season, both of them teams, so far. What happens in the playoffs? So, I wouldn't, to me, it wouldn't make a big difference. So, you don't think LeBron and Curry will beat the Suns? Not right now. I don't think so. Mm. That's a good, that's a bold statement. Um, Do you think they would? Huh? Do you think they would? I I think LeBron beats LeBron sometimes end up doing well against the Suns and I, we just saw what Curry did so I was thinking them two together would be would be would be crazy. I mean just to think about it, they could take you talk about a team that could take their time like each person getting a basket. This would be one of those teams if that was the case. I wouldn't want to see him on the Golden State though. They would have to give up. I mean, I would prefer to see him on Golden State than Philly because Philly would have to give up a core of that team as well as um, Golden State. But it seemed like Golden State is unhappy with the per- the pieces that they have right now. So it looked like they would they would probably be the better fit for that, even though we know it's not going to happen. We're just talking about it. Um, but I think it is balling down to – where LeBron wants to play next year, and I think people have every right to start putting their um, bid in for him. That's what I would say. To what, to, your, to what you were saying, no, I don't think that Steph Curry and LeBron could win against the Suns this year, but yeah. if it was to happen potentially next year, to me it's one of them situations, if that was to happen, that they got to gain the chemistry, kind of how like D-Wade and LeBron at first didn't know yeah. Who was going to be this person? Who's, and it took them some time to figure out. And I don't know if and I don't know if this is a big enough time for them to beat the Suns. Well, I'm saying big enough time. It's February. Playoffs start in like two months. So that's what I meant. But mm-hmm. if it was long term, I'm not mad at that combo. Just not in two or three months. Yeah. So I know we're talking about a lot of hypotheticals. So hypothetically speaking, do you guys think LeBron will remain a Laker until the end of his career? I think it's in everybody's best interest that LeBron stays a Laker to the end of his career unless another team can put together some kind of some kind of deal where they could bring Bronny in. I think that's his ultimate goal. I think that's where he retires. I think that's when he retires after he plays with his son. It seemed like that's been a writing on the wall for a very, very long time. But I don't I don't see LeBron wanting to play with his son 
in a different in any city like the way people are making it seem i don't think that happens any any season i think because of the way the lakers are playing it makes it even better to say if you want me to stay here then this is what what needs to happen but i think that'll happen in the lakers or i mean if he goes to new york it would be better but that's just my that's a wish list i was about to say the same thing i think lebron uh, stays in New York, pardon me, in L.A., or if he goes somewhere, it would be New York. And the only reason I say that, even though Rich Paul shut that down, is just because all the other stuff that he has going on outside of basketball, uh, whether it's his production company, whether his uh, sports agency, they need to be a major markets to do the business that they're doing outside of basketball in the major cities that they're in. Can it happen in any city, do business? Yeah. You got computers, technology, you could be anywhere and take care of your business. But, you know, when you have Maverick Carter and Rich Paul running up in offices, taking care of business day to day, uh, back and forth, um, the major cities are where these businesses are at. And for me, I think that he goes, stays in LA. Or, like Major just said, I was going to say the same thing, New York, but I don't see him going to New York unless it's something that we don't know about because Rich Paul shut that shit down too quick. Do you think it's based upon if his sons play if his sons play there? Yeah, absolutely. As far as his son situation, uh, we all know he had a um, terrible situation with the cardiac arrest. Um, he's not playing a lot of minutes from what I see in early in the season with you 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 USC. USC, and we all know that. If this situation didn't happen before the season, he would get a lot of minutes. He wasn't getting a lot of minutes. And I'd be telling this to niggas because they'd be like, oh, Bronny ain't on that. Bronny not getting the minutes. He, I thought he was going to be nice to that. Yo, bro, the nigga just had a cardiac arrest on the court. They're monitoring this kid. Yeah. Because you have to realize, Bronny could have went to any school he wanted to go to. Um, not any outside the top recruits above him. But... You could have went to any school, so trust me, between uh, his mother and LeBron, Bronny's mother, that is, and LeBron, these conversations was had prior to him going to USC. Is he going to get playing time? Is he going to get minutes? Because he could have went to Ohio State. Yeah. They rolled out the red carpet for him and did everything else. But, That's what I was thinking. He should have went to Ohio State or Duke, one of those type of schools. Right, so... Either way, right now, I think he's not playing a lot because of the situation. Him being eligible for the draft, he, he is eligible, but does he need to go right now? You haven't really had a great college career yet because of your situation, not getting the minutes. But when your father is LeBron James, everything is possible. Uh, when you say LeBron playing with his son, it would be crazy because it's like, you know, I don't remember anybody else doing that outside of Ken Griffey and Ken Griffey Jr. playing at the same time on the same team. But is this one of those situations for LeBron? Like, I once we on the court together, I, I did what I had to do. All right, cool. It's over. We made the shit happen. And not saying just leave Bronny for dead. That's not the right term to use, but be like, all right, go work on it. You're not going to get a lot of minutes. Play here, play there. Or... When I say play here, play there, I'm just saying, like, if you get traded to Charlotte, don't worry about it. We did what we need to do. I don't know. I, right now, because I don't have a big sample size of his college career, yeah. I don't know if he should go to the NBA right now. That's why I was asking that, because it sets that up to be that way, and especially if people don't feel like you earned it, pause, and they feel like you're only here because of your dad, even though it's a, it's a storybook ending for LeBron, it probably will be traumatic for his son. Because every way he goes, people will be, nepotism, they, they, they'll just be yelling it everywhere they go. Like, yo, you know why you're here, right? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I know we was teasing a nigga the other day and shit, talking about um, Austin Rivers. He was talking about how he had to deal with that. And to me, his high school career and college career was better than Bronny's. Yeah. And he had to deal with that. I'm not saying Doc Rivers was LeBron, but you had to hear, you're only here because of your father. 
your father's here. And he was saying how that fucked with him for a while because he had to prove to people that he really deserved to be there, which he did. Shaquille O'Neal's number 32 jersey was retired by the Orlando Magic for their first ever jersey retiring. What do you guys think about Shaq having his third jersey retired? I mean, that's pause. That's 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 Superman. So he pro, he's supposed to get his jersey retired. I think it should have been a dual um, retiree. I know Shaq is not gonna like this, but. I think um, Nick Anderson jersey should have been retired right along with his. When you talk about um, Orlando, because those they both had you know pretty good careers there, and the, and the pillars of that franchise as well as Penny was, but Penny you know got hurt probably quicker than they did. Shaq, my man, but I don't think it should be Orlando. I think Orlando just looking for shit to grasp onto. Maybe Shaq made a donation or some <laughs> shit. They ain't win no championship. You know, and don't get me wrong, people get their shit retired who didn't win no championship. So I dig it. I dig it. But to me, uh, all the greatest shit that we remember Shaq for, and I'm not going to sit here and leave out him and Penny because that shit was amazing. But yeah. Uh, the championships and all the domination. I say I'm, I'm using the wrong words because he was dominating from the jump. Yeah. But the, but the winning didn't really start till after he left Orlando. You got to the championship and got swept. Dream shit, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> dream, dream. You were still still a little young, a little baby at the time. Went by the ears, <laughs> pause. Dream got crazy <laughs> with niggas down there. We ain't no Seneca even do that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Dream. He was Dream, getting wild. Yeah, Dream, Dream was going crazy on Shaq, and then Dream went crazy on Patrick Ewing. Yeah, Both he years, did. It was he back to back. Did. So to me, I'm not I'm, I'm not knocking it. Shaq is well-deserved of the statue he, sees he got, he got uh, the retirement in Miami and L.A. Orlando. I don't know. Yeah, why don't people talk about Dream? Dream <laughs> gave a lot of niggas <laughs> problems, yo. problems, yo. Problems, yo. Them two years Mike was gone, it was his league, bro. And think about it, the championships that he won those two years were against the top centers. It was yeah. Patrick Ewing and Shaquille O'Neal. Not only that, he sh they swept Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> swept them niggas. Dream was a problem. Yeah, get them niggas out of here. Yeah, yeah, swept With them niggas. Penny, everybody. Yeah, it Dana was, Scott, it was, they team yeah, was yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was. Horace it was, Grant tried to run yeah, over there. Yeah, they yeah. That's a, a fact. Yeah, that's they a had fact. a super team. Yeah, so, yeah, Dream doesn't get a lot of credit he deserves. You know, a lot of people go see Dream in the off season to learn moves and footwork, so on and so, and so forth, you know, even to where Kobe Bryant was going before to go see yeah. him. And I remember we talked about it earlier this season where Gilbert Arenas was trying to get mad at Dream because Dream charged Giannis <laughs> 50000 You remember that when he tried to charge Giannis? Well, he did charge Giannis 50000 yeah. <laughs> for footwork. And listen, you know. Everybody maybe, went and worked with a Dream, came back with Dream, something worth that fifty. I right. remember Kobe came back right, with, with that, yeah, the that turnaround fade yeah, Dream, that nobody could stop. So it was worth the, that. Spin dream shit was crazy. I just think me personally, um, I would definitely disagree with Gilbert because, and that's my nigga. But only reason I kind of would agree with Gilbert, I, I think that a nigga six eleven should go see Dream. Yeah, even though you bring you the gotta ball up. go see. Yeah, him. I think because now yeah, if you're a playing guy, you gotta go it's, see it's, Sham. It's yeah, just yeah stuff just, you gotta do. I just think that the game's kind of changing a little bit to where. You don't really see niggas run to the box and be like, yeah. come on. Now, that, at that time, you had to go see Dream. That, yeah. It was a mandatory yeah. thing to see Dream. But, you know, you got big men facing the basket now. It isn't like their backs to the basket. Working it, on their threes. Yeah, you can actually see if the point guard is being covered full court, you could give the ball to Joel Embiid and he bring the ball up. Or you could give the ball to Giannis and he get the ball up the court. It was times where... It was, you wouldn't dare do that. Patrick Ewing would it's never like, go bring, get it, yeah, go get yeah. it. You would never get Patrick <laughs> Ewing to bring the ball up the court. You Even know Joker saying? does it from time to yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. It's different now. So, uh, but far up to 50,000, I got mixed emotions. I think if you're over 6'10", go see Dream. But I get Gilbert's point. The game is kind of changing and niggas ain't doing no moves no more.
Cool. Yeah, you still need those moves in your arsenal though, because when it comes down to to in the defense of the fifty, is that when it, if you want to be a champion, this is where um Dream would say, listen to me, if you want to just play around at the perimeter, go listen. <laughs> 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 That's how you shut that down. Okay, so after not making the all-star team, Jamal Murray said, I'd love to get that kind of recognition, but I think when you win in the playoffs, you win on the biggest stages you play and show yourself on the biggest stages and you prove yourself against those so-called all-stars. Then it's whatever. So do you guys think Jamal Murray should have been an all-star? Um, when I think of the West Coast, not really. Um, not really. And, and Denver is my team. And I, I would say that. I don't think he deserved to be on that team. When you think of like Steph and different people like that, that have been putting up historical numbers this year. Um, is Jamal Murray capable of being an all-star? Yes. Is he all-star caliber? Yes. But based upon those, those numbers and the votes, he, he wouldn't be on that team. It's just that simple. I could think, I, I could even think about, um, what's his name? Fox, Deon, how you say his first name? Darren Fox. Yeah, he, he's the one that should be on that team as well. So you could look at both of them as, would they have a play in? They need to have a one-on-one -on -one game for the last spot like they do for um, the playoffs. That would be crazy. You think you're supposed to be on the team? He thinks he's supposed to be on the team? Let's play one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I was, I'm looking at the All Star roster. Since right they now. got um, you know, Adam Silver trying new stuff. Pause. Wait. Right. You think you belong on the team? Who you think you belong on there before? And then the last spot, niggas should have to play one on one to get the spot. That'd be a good idea. Would you like me to read some of the names on? I'm it? looking at it now. Okay. Um, because Steph definitely gonna be on that team. So if you're a point guard, you know you don't got that spot. What's the next spot? Looking at the roster right now, there's really no room for him. Yeah, and then you got what you call it. Every time somebody switches um, coasts, like James Harden switched coasts, that's somebody's spot. Damian Lillard goes to the East, that's somebody's spot. Right. People got to pay attention to that as James well. James Harden's not even on here, though. He, he didn't even make it. It's Kawhi and... uh. Paul, Paul George, yeah. Um, I feel for for Murray though. I feel him. I'm looking at the, at the roster, and I'm not mad at anybody on the roster because you gotta realize, uh, Shay Shay needs to be on the team. That's just the way yeah, it exactly. Shay and stuff need to be on the team, but at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> both of these could be true. Yeah, because you know what it is? It's like this. It's like, yo, look, and I don't know how to fix it. I don't have a solution. I don't know the answer. Uh, when it comes to stuff, 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 Curry, in this mm -hmm. particular situation, 35 years old, carrying the whole team on his back, um, having a sensational year, uh, buzzer beaters, 30-point game after 30-point game after 30-point game. Over 50% from the field, probably about 25 or 30% this season. I would not take him off this team. But what is the solution when they're in now 10th place? When the selection was being made, I think there's an 11th, 12th place. And you're the second best player on your team and you're a defending champion, and you're in fourth place. What, what, what's the, you know, what, how does it work? You know, I, I don't, you know, we it's only one person from the Nuggets going to the All-Star game. We even got LeBron and AD, which we know LeBron needs to make it also in AD because he's the second best player, should be first on the Lakers, but they're in ninth place. So we got... Four players that's not in the playoffs, in the play-in, but four players that's not in the, even in the playoffs right now in the All-Star game to where we got teams 
such as uh, the, the Nuggets that are guaranteed in the playoffs right this very second, and Sacramento that would be in the playoffs right this very second. And Sacramento has no All-Stars, and Denver has two. So what's the answer? What's the solution? Because we know popularity is also winning some of these decisions. But if, my, if I'm helping my team have a great record, wheel them the championships, and I know season goes from season to season, but right now at this very moment, I got two teams that's in the playoffs versus four players that's not. I don't know the answer. This West Coast team is a perfect team. Like if I was looking at this team, to think of Shea, Shea how you say it, Shea or Sha? Shea? with Luca and then Kevin Durant, LeBron, and Joker. Even the people coming off the bench is crazy. I mean, you're looking at um, Anthony Edwards, who's having a phenomenal year. You're looking at Devin Booker, Steph, Stephen Curry. There's really nobody you could say will take this person off. There's absolutely not one person you can be like, okay, let's swap. Um, Murray for this person. It, it's just couldn't do it with the GOAT. I don't know who who Anthony I'm, I'm not, I think this is a great team put together. I'm not disagreeing with that. What I'm yeah. saying is the argument for me, if I'm if I'm a GM or coach or anybody fighting for my players, we are in fourth place. I know this team looks gorgeous. <laughs> it looks good. But you got four Nick four players on their on this team that can't help their team. Yeah. That's just the argument. But looking at the roster, it does look sexy. It looks great. I'm just saying if I have I, to fight I do for my see play. somebody I will replace I will I will replace Anthony Davis with, with um Jamal Murray. That's the spot. I'm not mad at that neither. I'm definitely not mad at that, but you know, you got four four players. You shouldn't be an all star if there was times this season people was begging you to play. That don't make sense, especially as a reserve. Now, the first couple of people is supposed to be because of um, votes, but the reserves is supposed to be work put in. That's the coaches who make these decisions. Yeah. Who's the coach? Who's the coach? Whoever the coach is, you need to revisit this. No, the coaches around the league vote for the reserves. So Yeah, they need to revisit this. So it's all the coaches. Because Murray is definitely, if you're a part of the champs, you definitely got to have two All-Stars. I agree. If you're going to give three spots, they used to give three spots to the number one team. So the champs definitely get two players. We knew every year it was going to be these two players. It's going to be Ewan and somebody else if they lead the East. There's, there's no way you're supposed to have. But that's, that's, a, that's a great word you just said. Lead the East. These niggas ain't leading. Yeah. These niggas ain't even in the playoffs if the playoffs started right now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what makes it crazy that they got two players in there. Absolutely. Niggas is out of the playoffs. LeBron and Steph, too, for that matter. As good as they are, if the playoffs start today, they're not in the playoffs. Yeah, so if they only gave Steph one spot from Golden State, it should only be one spot from the Lakers. Well, before we go to break, just one more topic. So SoFi announces a partnership with the Jason Tatum Foundation committing over $1 million over multiple years to aid low-income single-parent families in building generational wealth. So what do you guys think about the new contribution by SoFi? I think before we get into that, whatever happened with the um, the Snell, the, the, the player Snell and the, um, the autism fund? I don't know if he got picked up. Yeah. Okay. It's like, honestly, after the whole TikTok things, a lot of things went silent, but I will get back to you and see if there's an update there. All right. Yeah, so back to this. Tatum Tatum um, Foundation received a million dollars. Yeah. To do what again? To aid low-income single-parent families in building generational wealth. So they will help single-parent families with a down payment on a house. I like that. I like that. How many houses can you get with a million dollars? As a down payment. 
Probably a few if it's what about four hundred thousand for the house, three hundred thousand. How much is a house in low income? Low income. You ain't been in low income in a minute. God bless. God. You, look God over, bless. you looked over like a fan. Like, what's that going for these days? That's, what, that's the face you had. That ain't funny, man. That's not funny. For yeah. real, you know? Yeah. God's been good, you know? You know, the way you looked over confused. <laughs> I'm not laughing like that. You're supposed to get 20% of the house, right? 20%. Uh, if you got really good credit, probably ten percent. But that should that should help a lot of families. They got to give them some criteria, though. That's what I think. When you when you giving houses to people in low income housing, you're probably gonna have to make some stipulations, make your own HOAs. That hey, there can't be no gambling in this house, no selling dope in this house. You know, you're gonna have to put some stipulations in place you can't just throw that money there because then we'll be having a different talk about um they're hustling out of the tatum homes you know maybe t- <laughs> <laughs> right you, you gotta protect yourself out here. That's a- <laughs> I just niggas said they hustling out of the tatum projects yo you a wild nigga <laughs> It's true. Hey, I'm just trying to give you the, the game they gave me. They said we don't give the young niggas the game, right? So you take a good situation where you you lend finances from your your foundation, and now you're in a full rico, you know. So you gotta make sure that they understand that they could not be these kind of situations in these homes. As soon as you tell niggas don't do something, they doing it. <laughs> as soon as you be like, yo, don't do this, niggas like, all right, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how he got to protect his brand because he he came into the situation and do a very great thing, and you wouldn't want that very great thing to turn into a very bad thing. Who, who's donating this money? SoFi to Jason Tatum's foundation. SoFi, so who's SoFi exactly? The stadium. Yeah. So now SoFi and Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum makes $450,000 a game. This is two games of donations. No disrespect. So you think, think he should have put the million up himself? I'm not saying he can't. He definitely can. You know what he about to get. He about to get some real chicken if they gave this nigga uh, Brown, Jalen Brown, 325. He about to get some chicken. I'm not saying it's not a generous donation. I think anything to low-income families is dope especially in urban America, brown and black people, dope. The stadium, how much they make? <laughs> and to add, SoFi is the new banking partner of the NBA. Yeah, look at that. Oh, you get a million dollars. Yeah, niggas making that in like the first half of their day. I'm not, listen, I know niggas say, Kim, well, you donate you a million dollars. I'm not SoFi. I'm not getting $500,000 a game. <laughs> so... I think it's a great gesture. I think it's dope. I think if I don't care if they donated twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars, it's always good to give back and help out the less yeah. fortunate. But y'all got it. Y'all got it, nigga. <laughs> y'all definitely got it. Yeah, a million ain't news. It's not news. A million would be news if if one of us gave a million dollars, but a million is not news if you got that kind of. See, y'all just That's built a- some whole in low income yeah, shit, don't man. T.I. just built the whole shit down there in Atlanta so, by itself. So far, you can't do less than T.I. Yeah, T.I. just we built the whole shit. not going with that. Yeah, T.I. built shit dolo. Him and Tiny built the whole low-income shit dolo. No bad. He ain't play a game one time, ever. He don't own no stadium. Nigga gave back. Dolo. So are you pocket watching? Who, me? I'm not pocket watching. She told me. <laughs> I'm like, I, I ain't asked about this shit. She gave me the information. I'm like, yo, if you telling me, I, I'm gonna tell you my opinion. See, I just yeah, I, shit I up. think I think if you're gonna if you're gonna help the um the hood, I'm a, I'm gonna go on the record. If you're gonna help the hood, you gotta put some real serious money into it because that's one of the things that make other other nationalities better because people invest more. 
So if you invest a million dollars that everybody got split up, it, it probably, uh, I'm not using the best words, but we need to invest more in a, in a black neighborhood. So people can have better outcomes. If better outcomes is really what you desire. And not only that, like where's that money niggas was promising during the pandemic? Like when niggas was scared, when they, when they thought they shit was going to get burned down. Like, yo, Wendy niggas about to burn a Wendy's there. No, no, no. We donating $20 million to the black community. Yeah. What black community, where'd that money go? Who did you reach out to and who was in charge of it? Like, it, I went, know it probably went to the gatekeepers. Whoever, That's why we need new gatekeepers. It probably went to the gatekeepers. Whoever it went to, is no paper trail. And there's yeah. no proof that they sent it. I think it was so many niggas saying they don't donate because they didn't want to have their organization feel racist or feel they didn't give back. And there was no person to watch this shit. Yeah. Yo, don't burn. Hey, don't burn down the Pepsi Corporation. We're going to donate $10 million. To and the, it's crazy to the that black they community. had. What's the black community? Yeah, exactly. and it's crazy that they had $20 million on call when things got hot. Yeah. Who was those niggas? Yeah. Look, they got everybody looking. At the end of the day, right? And I'm just being honest with you. And all, all these people are cool with me. I'm just giving you a scenario. Yeah. When Eminem had this black woman and called them bitches or whatever, and he, he apologized for it later. You know, he said he was wrong about it. But at the time, when he did it, he's under Interscope, which is Jimmy IV, and Def Jam is under... Universal, which they is both under Doug Morris. So mm -hmm. for people who don't understand what I'm talking about, the parent company to Interscope and Def Jam was Universal and a guy named Doug Morris. Russell Simmons ran Def Jam. Jimmy Alvin ran Interscope. When Eminem said something about um, disrespecting black females, he apologized. People were kind of up and out. Well, no, it was kind of pre-internet, so it wasn't crazy. But well, Russell Simmons came over and said, nah, he didn't mean it. He's a good guy. We had a conversation. Um, that isn't even his character. So in other words, go get that nigga to clear up this shit with the black people. Yeah. To calm them the fuck down so they don't go crazy. And no disrespect to Russ, he was the token at the time to fix an Eminem situation. So you got niggas when to answer your question, like, who's on standby? They always got a nigga. Yo, What's that black nigga name in the cubicle? Tell him to go fix this shit. I know I never met the nigga. Tell him we love black people. Tell him we cool and we gonna donate some money. What's his name, Tyrone? Yeah, Tyrone Jenkins. Tell him to go get in front of the camera and fix the whole shit for black people real quick. I think every company got that in these times. Well, just to add on to the Jason Tatum part, I will say at least it's a start. I mean, black people are less likely to actually own homes and have that home ownership compared to other races. And then just in general, in the conversation of buying black, we should buy more into black businesses and like black establishments more. We should, because yo, that's going to help yo. us more generationally. Because if we keep buying from, you know, other people, we're never really going to make that mark. Just saying. And it's Black History Month, so we should be doing it even more now. Says the lady should. with a Rolex on. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, I didn't buy a shout out to y'all. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm team by black. Got to support you our people. Well. You mean well. I always mean well. I know. That's why I said you mean well. I was just playing with you. <laughs> I got on a Rolex too. Cam does too. I'm buying what I like. <laughs> Yo, I You're not like buying that. black. <laughs> if it's if it's dope, or if it's look, man, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I buy black if I can. <laughs> if I can buy black, I will. You know, we got a history of doing shiesty shit. You know, yeah. you know? and which people like us are changing that. Yeah. You know, you gotta think about this. Before we did the Mark deal with Mark Jackson, he thought we was gonna rob him. Yeah. <laughs> Mark was like, "Yo, you know, this is Mark Jackson's exact words." And Mark know because he—that's my nigga. He's like, "I'm just saying." You know, people of our own skin tone usually do it to our own skin tone. So what you really trying to do? I'm like, yeah, that's Mark, are you trying to ask me if I'm trying to get over or rob you? 
<laughs> he said, what's in it for you? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's what niggas is used to niggas doing. We changing the narrative <laughs> so yeah, it ain't like right. that. But at the end of the day, as far as buying black, look. In my neighborhood, it was a grocery store. A, I was know, about got, to say that. You don't even buy black food. You no, know I'm saying is you got a grocery store. You got the Habibis, the, the Arabs, you know. You got Arab every corner. There was one black grocery store. You go in there and get whatever, but it was a, it was a front for something else. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna say if there's people in the room who know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, they got all this soda, <laughs> chips. <laughs> right there on Lenox Ave, right around the corner. I'm like, this quiet ass grocery store, niggas standing there like this against the whole four or five. <laughs> You ever go get weed from Branson back in the days? <laughs> you got to buy chips when you leave the store. <laughs> Yo, get a soda when you leave. <laughs> you remember that B? You got to go buy, you gotta yeah. buy chips. Yo, you come buy the weed? Yo, grab some chips too. Yo, this ain't no real grocery store, nigga. <laughs> so yeah, I want to buy black, but it has to be quality. You have to, you have to take, you have to do great marketing, great presentation. Look, my homegirl, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm not trying to eat healthy, do the right thing. She said, Kim, um, and she's Spanish, which is my homegirl, BB. She says, Kim, um, I'm making green. Shout out to you, BB, because you know what I'm talking about. She said, I'm making green juice. Um, you should come try it. I drink green juice in the morning. So I said, I'm going to give her drink a try. Pause. So I get there, and she gives me a mayonnaise jar with no label on it. And like, yo, with just green shit in it. And I'm like, yo, what is that? Oh no, I made it this kill. And I said, nah, baby, that presentation is not correct. I'm not, I'm not drinking that. <laughs> like, you don't trust me? Yeah, but I, it don't look delicious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It has to be the right presentation. There's no label. I'm not talking about a real Hellman's jar. I'm but the label ripped off. Nah. And they might have been the best thing in the world, healthy wise for me, yeah. but it's not good presentation. Right. That's fair. Presentation. She changed it up and got together. You gave her advice, so she was able to fix it. Presentation is important. Okay, did you have a thought? Or? Yeah, nigga tried, uh, somebody tried to bring me some sea moss. They said, sea moss is what you need, Mace. And then they brought me the sea moss, the same thing, in a Coca-Cola case. Yeah, I'm <laughs> drinking in a little jar. Somebody nah, bought, I can't do somebody bought, Yeah, they'd be, somebody bought me sea moss in a Ziploc. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why would you have sea moss in a Coca-Cola bottle? This is crazy. Good point. All right, y'all. We're going to go to break, and when we return, we will talk about a feud between a couple football players. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about was toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She tired of hearing I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall. Oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about she it. wanna be free. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Timberwolves will play Portland. Underdog Fantasy has Anthony Edwards at 26 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? I'm going high. High. I'm going high. Okay. Rudy Gobert is at 12 and a half rebounds. Do you have him higher or lower, Kim? How many? 12 and a half. Lower. Lower. Yeah, we're not That's going. Big. We're not getting crazy up here now. Okay. And DeAndre Ayton is at four first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Lower. Lower. Okay, download the Underdog Fantasy app, and you can make your picks too. So the Jets, Sauce Gardner, got into it with 49ers, Travarius Ward. So Sauce Gardner had tweeted, I told y'all the Niners might look better on paper, but the Chiefs always find a way. Travarius then responded, boy, yo ass ain't never sniffed the playoffs. You watching from the couch. Worry about the sorry-ass Jets. Everybody got something to say about the team in the Super Bowl. Your opinion doesn't need to be heard, kid. Thoughts on his response? Mm. 
<laughs> it sound right to me. <laughs> like, yo, nigga. Look, I know it is second place is not is not first place, but you get to experience the Super Bowl. At least you get to go. I mean, I'm not a big fan of second place, but the Jets, chill, bro. You got to chill until further notice. Like, make the playoffs and then at least have something to say about something. Uh, I talk about it all the time. If you got a phone, you got an opinion. And that's just what you have to deal with in this society and this generation and what we're living in. Everybody could give you an opinion. I get, I'm a victim of this myself. You sit there and you go on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or Snapchat or whatever app you're on. And I'm guilty of this. I'll have... 5,000 comments on a post. I'm scrolling through them. You know, somebody likes, I, I like a comment. Somebody says, like a comment. Somebody says, and then somebody says some rude shit, and I reply to them and get smart back with them. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, this thing got me caught up arguing with him when I could have responded to the 300 people who said something nice before them. And I know this is two athletes. I'm just saying in general, we, we I see it all the time. Whether it's not just me, I was a celebrity too. There'll be a million nice comments. Somebody say something slick. Now you're in a confrontation with them instead of just saying, yo, thank you guys for supporting you. I appreciate the love. You could have did that a hundred times, but the nigga who say the negative shit, you get caught right up in there and ready to fight with them instead of giving some love to, the, some, to somebody who says something good. I don't know exactly his Twitter feed or Instagram or whatever that was on, but that's us as black people. <laughs> so as you say something slick, we're going to say something slick back. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was a bunch of comments to him saying, congratulations on going to the Super Bowl. Uh, don't worry about it. Maybe next year you'll get it. Uh, you, got, you had a great season, et cetera, et cetera. Nope. We got to answer this nigga who said that slick shit before we say <laughs> something to yeah, anybody who else. He, who is he talking to? Yeah, All yeah, that. yeah. yeah exactly. Does that make so, him a prisoner of the moment, though? That's what I was thinking. I just say it's us as black people. Like, like you, you don't, you know, you do a good job ignoring everybody. But even me, sometimes I, I'll erase a kind of uh, shit I'm about to write and be like, I ain't even gonna respond to this. I'm just gonna ignore it because I just ignored 25 good comments to give this right. negative energy some some of my attention. And I could have gave these 25 people some love for showing me love, but nope. Cam doesn't work like that. Cam, Cam got to say something dumb back. Cam got to get into a whole argument for four or five paragraphs with niggas. And all my fans who do show love, I'm working on that. I'm working on me. And I'm going to get to y'all and start ignoring and just blocking people who say negative things instead of giving my time and energy. So then I should ignore what she said to me. Well, well you were talking about the girl from earlier? Yeah. Well, think about it is this. Since we talking about it, I looked at it during the commercial break. Yeah. And she said that you're a clown for saying what you said. But I don't understand how somebody who's in the circus calls some, that is the clown calls somebody a clown. You're dead in the circus, boo. You're in the circus. You're on, <laughs> you're on every housewife shit. You don't own it. If you ain't Shawnee and them, you in the circus. You on Real Housewives of this, Real Housewives of that. You fucking with niggas, with niggas' nephews, because really, uh, what's the nigga Jordan son? Yeah, name? Marcus. That's Scotty nephew. Come yeah. on, man. You know what I'm saying? What up, Neff? Yeah, that's that's real Neff, though. Yeah. Like you know, you watch this kid grow up. You fucking with a nigga nephew. This is Woody Allen ish. Yeah, this is nasty, and it, it's it's real nasty. Yeah, you it's watch Woody that Allen. Kid, you watch this young man grow up. And then you said, "Listen, I'm going. I'm gonna lay on him because I see he's kind of not potential. Yeah, yeah, not just potential. He ain't his father. I could get him. Yeah, I could get him. He don't have his father traits. But look, there's no reason to call Mesa clown and you in the circus, boo. Like we said earlier, not earlier, yesterday. Just don't be the next sucker because she's out there. Mace made a good point. You're gonna be 50 this year. You're not Lori Harvey. You don't have time." You need to find the next sucker, and I hope nobody's available. You're the fucking clown. You look stupid. Everybody in the comments is on me side. I really don't. You know what's crazy about it is that we're in an era where she thinks she doesn't look stupid. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? She doesn't really even realize that she looks stupid. So, therefore, she's like, 
Mace looks stupid, <laughs> not knowing that you really look yeah. dumb, my nigga. You look stupid. I, it's really no more to say because to well, me personally. Yeah, but we said this, we said this earlier in the season. We're in the we're in a time where where people people that's doing the craziest stuff, they just don't like people to tell them the truth about nothing. Oh, absolutely. You tell a nigga the truth, you hating. Yeah, absolutely. But this isn't you know what I you know what I always had a problem with? And I don't mind because when, mm -hmm. you know, some people look good, and I'm not talking about her, and if you can figure out a way to make your money and so on and so forth, cool. But you really have no talent outside of gassing niggas. And if you want to consider that a That's talent. That's a talent. Yeah, I'm about to say, if you want to consider that a talent, more power to you. But a lot of females are talentless at making money because they figured out, oh, I get a BBL, oh, I get my lips done. I get a tummy tuck. Oh, I lift my cheek up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> get my ears shrunk. <laughs> Move my nose over a little bit. Yank a rib out. <laughs> Take a rib out. Yeah, exactly. So Move they your forget. belly button. Yeah. Belly buttons is almost to people's chest after them surgeries. I seen girl, yeah, you bunny, can do girl anything. Bunny, belly button on a sternum up here. This is yo, crazy. Yeah, I'm dead ass. I seen a girl belly button up here. I said, yo, they moving belly buttons? That shit is wild. <laughs> but, you know, shout, shout out to the talentless, man. Yeah. That's all I can say is shout out to the talentless, man. There's really nothing else to say because people like this, Mace, they have nothing else to do now. They watching you or watching us and saying, oh, he's a clown. Bitch, you got makeup on and big shoes, red shoes right now and don't know. And don't know, my nigga. Sad, man. And I feel more bad. No disrespect, Scotty Jr. and Scotty Sr. Because I feel more sorry for y'all than anybody else. So mm -hmm. I don't want you to feel like I'm talking about your baby moms or your mother yeah. because we have mad respect for you guys. Uh, this sounds like it should be an intervention at home. And I think that may have already tried to happen. But that's one of them. You can't tell me what to do. Yeah. You're not giving me, listen, you're not supporting me. Shut up, bitch. Yo, we've been doing, we've been took care of you forever. Now you plotting on my teammate's son. And it ain't go right. And niggas is noticing it ain't go right. And now you got an attitude. When you want to be in the public, it's all great when you're in the public and shit going right. Then when niggas give their opinion, you mad at the people giving your opinion. Not, not really much to talk about outside of that. Keep watching. It's crazy because I feel like that was like a nicer response from you both. So. No, because you know why? It's, 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 it's where are you really going with this? We, we, it's nothing we can really say because outside of fucking niggas, what do we know you for? I really don't know. You can sit there and say the Real Housewives of this because you're fucking somebody to be on that show. So I, I don't really know what to say about it. It's like, you know when somebody be like, yo. She's on a show because she's a wife, not because she's having sex with niggas. Whose wife is she? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Whose wife is she? She's not married <laughs> to nobody. <laughs> Yeah, she ain't married to nobody. Them bitches be on the show because this ain't a real housewife. That don't mean they marry. It's just the name of the show. They, ain't, they don't be married. They get the most entertaining. You get exes and sometimes you get former. Sometimes it be the real housewives and basketball wives and then be a football nigga wife. Just the name of the show. They just throwing niggas in there sometimes who's, who they think can sell the programming. Okay, and then before we wrap on... Twitter, Skip Bayless asks, what if a black star receiver had gone at a Super Bowl coach the way Travis Kelsey did? So one, how do you guys feel about Skip asking the question, and then do you guys think it would have been different? What a way to come back, Paul, Skip. Great way. I think I, think I could think of two athletes that would have been kicked out of the league if Terrell Owens did that. Shout out to T.O. wherever you are recovering. If T.O. would have bumped a coach like that, he'd be out the league. And I agree with um, A.B. If A.B. would have 
bumped into the coach back in Tampa, he definitely would have been out the league. He'd been taking his jersey off earlier than usual. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Uh totally. Those are definitely two players. I it's probably a handful more. <laughs> yeah, Ocho Cinco. Yeah, a bunch of people would have it would have been a big deal. But mm -hmm. what I will say is this. When Skip needs to try and make a comeback for anything, he always goes to race. <laughs> it's reverse race. Yeah, he always try to bring race into everything. Like, yo, niggas ain't say my name in a minute. Let me say some shit that got to do with race <laughs> so I can get bored up again. <laughs> Skip said I, I know I, what to do. I forgot Skip was on TV, man. So Yeah, Beast Mode would have bumped the nigga. He'd be yeah. out the league. Yeah, man. Uh, I, was, I give yeah, that was the way you started. Yeah, great way to make a comeback, Skip. Pull out the racism card. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Act like I'm with the niggas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Well, that'll do it. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, uh, uh.